developers will look like because there may be a bit of tinkering here and there, but otherwise to stay engaged through our uh, various um, communities and have your you have your key contact people inside Microsoft that you might know or familiar faces you see on the webinar. So um, any any update from Matt? People? I've pinged them with uh, the Teams urgent feature, which um, <laughs> notifies people every two minutes for 20 minutes, and he hasn't responded and read the message yet. That's so right. um, he must be uh, held up in his prior meeting, probably running over for a few minutes. Yeah. Um, what do you reckon we just... We could come back to him, I think, if uh, if Sarah and Val are good to go. Yeah. That's all good right. by me. Awesome. awesome. Hello, everybody. Yeah, he's all good. Awesome. Okay, so, yeah, thank you so much, um, Sarah and Valentina. So, Sarah is the Senior Client Manager at NTT, and Valentina is a Partner Development Manager at Microsoft, a fellow colleague of mine. And this month, we just wanted to hear a bit more about women rising, but more generally about um, accessibility and getting more women talent in tech. And so, yeah, there are a range of questions that I kind of collated that I had in mind. But if others have questions and they want to drop in the chat and we can monitor that throughout the um, session, we can also do that. So first of all, thank you, Sarah and Valentina, for offering up your time today. No worries. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm really pleased to be here and a massive thanks to Microsoft for, you know, helping me get on this actual life changing program. So thank you. Thank you, Asa, for the invite. No worries. So, yeah, like I said before, Women Rising, I've seen bits and pieces um, about it on LinkedIn. Colleagues have posted about it um, at Microsoft, especially we amplify this um, initiative. So my understanding is it helps women show up authentically with confidence and builds up your leadership skills so era could you tell me or bit a bit more light on the women, women rising program how you found out about the opportunity and what compelled you to sign up sure well i was actually really lucky um i was out to lunch actually with steve hornblow and valentina from microsoft um, who told the people at the table about the program when we were discussing ways that NTT can really help to improve our position around DNI in New Zealand. Um, Steve sent through the details of the program immediately after the meeting. And when I looked at the content, I was completely sold. So the modules cover things like vision and purpose, radical conference, grit and grace. And so looking at that, I just thought, gosh, this sounds really different and sounds like an investment in me and other women at NTT and, you know, considering things that we just hadn't really considered before. So um, that's that's what did it for me. I, I love I love one thing about what you said, and that's around the investment piece and seeing this as an opportunity to invest in yourself. And I think a lot of the time we can kind of, when we think about investment, we think about, yeah, it's so these 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 soft skills per se that can really help i guess spearhead your career development that's so so important just as much as your physical investment in your house and in other areas as well and and Absolutely. likewise valentina what enticed you to sign up to the program well thank you so um, at microsoft you know diversity and inclusion is key and i don't know if you have seen uh, vanessa sorenson our country manager sharing her personal story on a women magazine so if you haven't seen it i will paste the link on the chat so it's really sparring for all the females starting you know a career in it and um there was our goal basically is to radically change the face of, of technology industry, you know, by unlocking the, the female talent and partners and customers are a cru crucial part of it. So as Sarah mentioned, we were in a, you know, in an informal chat conversation and we realized that NTT had uh, was sharing a lot of, of the values and that that are extremely passionate about it. So as a PDM, I was happy, you know, to involve and encourage an, our partners to join. So I had multiple conversations about the format of the pro program, and then I was, you know, lucky enough to uh, be sponsored by Matt and, and Steve, which I hugely thank for that. And I was so eager to and thrilled to join the program. So. I, I, I think that the program has, a, you know, the modules are brilliant. So, and are quite de developing a different way than any other uh, career development program. So that was really excited. That excited me a lot. So um, 
as Sarah mentioned, it starts with a defining our individual vision and purpose, then moving to, you know, strengths, inner critic, teaching um, self-compassion, exercising growth mindset and so on. And then it's sort of a, it's a, it's a sort of a journey for self, you know, development and also that links it back to uh, career development, you know, through career mastering and personal branding and things like that. So I think that was the the key point that actually attracted me to to be part of, of this program. Awesome. So yeah, upskilling yourself and then how does that transpose into upskilling in your career? And I see Venus has shared the link to the article that where Vanessa tells her story and um, kind of building on the conversation uh, Valentina and Sarah are talking about. I find it very empowering for her to share her story. A, a lot of adversity Definitely. in her life. Yeah. And being very comfortable now with being able to share her story and empower other other people individual uh, um irrespective of you know um uh, gender identity or or um socioeconomic position and how that can empower other individuals so like very props to the more of these stories help kind of create a narrative around normalizing such conversations and i just can't appreciate Vanessa enough for being able to share that and you guys today as well sharing a bit, a bit about your journey in this program and there was another question i had um Vera, you've been in this uh woman rising since august could you provide a key takeaway you've learned so far during your tenure in the program there was a bit about modules but could be anything from what you've learned even from your colleagues that have been part of it mm. Yeah, no, overall, if I could sort of sum it up, I think the program speaks to living life more intentionally. And that sounds really simple, but there's a lot to do, you know, to invest in yourself to make you do that. Um, I think it really, the program makes you consider what's really fundamentally important to you and makes you sort of think about, well, what could the best version of you look like? Um, it can be really confronting at times, um, you, you know, asking some really personal, deep questions, and it really challenges you, I think, to reflect on where you are right now, where you want to be, and how are you going to address those gaps, and that's both personal and, and professional, so it covers you as a whole, as an individual. Um, and, you know, and as we said before, it, it turns out that you really need to invest in yourself in order to live life more intentionally. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sarah. And you've been on the journey with Women Rising for a similar period, um, Valentina, with Sarah around the August intake. I'd love to hear your perspective too around what you've kind of gotten the most of out of the program so far. Yeah, so the program isn't finished yet and I'm so looking forward to complete all the modules. And what it was extremely interesting from the program, as I mentioned, it, it has a different approach. It is that it was developed, you know, tailored for, for, for women and is mm. and is based on, on corporate and academic research. So um, everybody experienced it in a different way, but as Sarah mentioned, I thought something that was extremely impi impactful was um, a session that we, we learned about how to better un understand our inner critic and how to frame it by, you know, asking simple questions when we go down the path of self-doubt. So just identify, I am, uh, am I a, a self or an inner ally or, or our inner energy en enemy? Mm. How I am catching that story and how I'm going to tell, you know, myself is that through how I feel about it and reframe it into an action which exercises, um, you know, growth mindset. So I think that that was something really imp impactful and also, you know, creating that atmosphere and safe space where we could share our um, um, experiences. And there were a lot of multiple talks about, you know, imposter syndrome and how females executives usually, you know, around 75% um, of female executives have experienced um, imposter syndrome in a, in, a, in a period of their time. So I think it was a really good time for us to to be in a safe space where we could, you know, talk about um, different topics. And that's so important, the piece you mentioned about safe spaces. So even if, say, for example, some of our colleagues here today um, aren't able to sign up to the program, if you're able to, within your own organisation, create a space for women or even other people of 
various um, minority groups to be able to share and have conversations around some of some of these topics you talked about, Valentina, imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. covering um, other adversities, that, that becomes quite empowering to be like, oh, I'm not just in Definitely. this alone. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, there are other people who feel the same way. I'm not coming in as, you know, like, oh, okay, so it's not just me. Um, and again, it's coming to that idea around normalizing the way in which we try and show up in the corporate world. And maybe even more so in technology can be quite different, you know, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's a lot of food for thought there. Um, mm -hmm. One thing I was thinking about, and this is an open question to either of you, um, you can both answer it um, or individually is around how you how you manage to juggle the content for the program on top of your day to day routine. Um, yeah, is the woman rising content quite flexible and can you work that around your general life circumstances? Yeah, the program's really flexible. It's all self paced and it's delivered exclusively online. So that makes it really easy. Um, there are a couple of live events for each module, but they're so good. They're such valuable sessions for all the reasons we were talking about just now, you know, where you're hearing from other women navigating similar circumstances in a really safe environment. So, you know, those two hours per month basically are just are really easy to get to. Um, and I actually personally like to do the training when I've run out of steam for my BAU activities because the content makes me real feel like very motivated and I want to get back to my work when I've finished, you know, the modules. Um, so that's how it is for me. Mm. And if I can add, yeah, so I completely agree. It was extremely flexible, three hours maximum per module and the, the content is really easy to digest. And also there comes you have the option of having a video or an audio only format which allows you you know to if you are going for a run or doing exercises or if you want to listen to something different you can do it and and as Sarah mentioned just the, the two calls that we have a month with our cohort and and one the other one is led by Megan which is the CEO and co-founder of, of uh, Women Rising, which mm. is just primarily, you know, to answer all the questions and to go through the, the content, but it was extremely easy to manage. Mm. The only other thing I'd add is you can take as much time as you want on it. So some mm. of the questions are very provoking and, as I said before, almost confronting. And so it can take a bit of time just to procrast not procrastinate, to think <laughs> about it. You know, some slow thinking so that you can actually truly understand what it is, how you will answer, because it's asking quite confronting things. So, um, I mean, you can take as long or as little time, depending on how much you want to get out of it, as, as you like, I guess. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah, I love that. It's very flexible and malleable around your schedule and what you can devote to it. I guess one of the last questions I had was around how do you propose um, for women in the call today or those who may be watching the recording, um, how do you propose they go about having those conversations with their managers or colleagues around investing in this program or investing in yourself to participate in this program? Well, I personally think that the program is perfectly named and that it's called Women Rising mm. and it kind of delivers to its name. So it's designed to rise us up and to help us thrive. Um, so I think really focusing on, on you know, the word thrive and actually there's some really interesting statistics which are shared in the course about um, how people that thrive are, for example, 6% more engaged, 125% less likely to burn out, 30% more productive, 45% more likely to be satisfied, 32% less likely to quit. So in short, the stats stack up for a fantastic ROI for the company. So I think if you've got a manager <laughs> who wants to see some statistics, then just throw those at your manager because um, it's pretty hard to, yeah, pretty hard to ignore those stats. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I will, I will do the same. I will anchor the conversation around, you know, why gender equity in the workplace mm -hmm. is a good, is good for uh, for business. And I think one of the stats that it was mentioned is the, you know, the correlation between, you know, diversity and, and leadership in the leadership with a higher, you know, finance, financial performance. And it's basically because it incorporates, you know, variety of perspectives, experiences and leadership styles. So, but something that we have to be quite clear around is that there is a still, and I know that we are in a, we have, come a long way in terms of diversity in the workplace, but it's still 
a clear gap in more in the in the senior leadership on the C-level roles. And, and the only way of closing that gap is by supporting the, the emerging leaders and professionals. Um, so I think that's what Women Rising is doing. You can you can find women from you know different career mastery levels, which are which this program is helping them to to advance or, or to plan a career into a senior role, and is set, it basically sets females for success in their career. So I think that's really valid to point out. I love that. Uh, we love data, you know, and so those data <laughs> data driven decision making um, is always a, a top priority in tech, but also the people orientated stuff, the stuff that kind of gives you the passion and drive to continue doing what you're doing. And ultimately, I think all of the technology is around empowering people through tech. And so how can we do that in the workplaces and make, you know, the environment conducive to feeling like you belong? Um, and if you don't mind me putting on the spot here, um, Sarah and Valentina, are you able to, um, if if some of the women in our call today, or even managers who want to be allies to women, want to get in touch with you and maybe have more questions to ask, are they able to contact you on LinkedIn or any other email addresses? So I'd be so delighted. I'm mass a massive advocate. I feel like every woman, you know, at age 16, probably should be doing this program. <laughs> so feel free Definitely. to drop your um, LinkedIn or any e email address into the chat so people have that. And yeah, um, yeah. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you, Thank Sarah, you so much. for joining Thank us. You, Valentina. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. All right. So, um, Paul. Paul Balke, are you able to confirm if Matt is coming in today? Matt, we have a scheduling issue with Matt. Matt will be joining us at 3.45. Uh, so, yes. yeah, um, not sure how that happened, but uh, somehow it's dropped out of his calendar. So, um, yeah, he, he will be joining us. He's on another call. So, uh, oh, are we okay to move to the next uh, yeah. speaker on the agenda? So, Mikhail, that's all good. If you're able to share any slides or anything you're going through around Azure Advanced Specialization. Cool. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, a second. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. Let me quickly share my screen. And today I want to uh, quickly run for you uh, kind of ad hoc, let's call it ad hoc session. And sorry, because I'm presenting and I'm not the biggest expert. I might not see all the comments in the chat, but uh, I, will, I will stay and answer all your questions. So feel free to ping me um, separately. Uh, my name is Mikhail and I'm uh, New Zealand and Australia Partner Incentive Lead and today I want to discuss with you really quickly about advanced specialization and the benefits of advanced specialization specifically in Azure space uh, on your potential earnings through incentives. And uh, I totally understand that for some partners it might be a little bit kind of future discussion so you might be not there yet at that stage but still please kind of think about this kind of that might be uh, one of the first uh, times you, you're discussing it with uh, Microsoft representative, but there are some benefits and I just want to kind of make maybe uh, help you to build your internal business case with the management team to kind of explain the value of why would you invest time. Basically, it's time and money into acquiring this advanced specialization. There, there would be actually a financial benefit of having it. And uh, the first slide is uh, just overview. So if, if you're new to the advanced specialization on the partner uh, portal, you can search for advanced specialization or just uh, click this link and you will uh, come to this page and there are four different uh, solution areas and under each solution area we have our advanced specialization and under Azure I would say maybe around nine or ten different advanced specialization and on the right side this is kind of high level overview but for each, so for example if you're doing a lot of uh, things with uh, data warehouses, uh, there would be links, uh, so you can download the PDF with descriptions specifically about that program, what you need to do in order to achieve it and how to apply. And, but high level, uh, you need to have a gold status, uh, you need to uh, achieve required performance thresholds, that's usually a revenue, and you need to have specific amount of uh, trained people within your organization, that's why it's actually coming to the time because if people need to be uh, certified, they're not uh, performing the work. So that's why I totally understand that there are some costs. And plus, you would need to go through audit. However, once you have this uh, advanced specialization, first of all, it's kind of customer facing. So they, they, they will see that you are the top of the top partners in our ecosystem and uh, they should uh, trust you to, to run uh, for their Azure instances. Uh, 
However, there are a few additional money kind of benefits of advanced specialization, specifically in Azure. And <clears throat> quick overview or reminder, there are kind of two paths for you to earn incentives. The first path is uh, we call it breath motion or CSP. You as a partner, you sell Azure products to customers as CSP, and you will earn percentage of build revenue. That's simple and the beauty for us. It's one to one relationship. We know which partner actually sold that uh, ACR. Other option for you, if you're working with big customers like big uh, banks or actually with some startups, they purchasing it through different motion. It might be enterprise or self-service motion. Then actually they might uh, have uh, direct agreements with Microsoft with uh, price. You still have, can have opportunity to, to earn incentive. In that situation, you need to kind of establish to mark for Microsoft that you influence that ACR. And how to do this? You need to establish your PAL or Lighthouse Association, and that would kind of signal to the Microsoft that, yep, you're working with this customer, we must reward you. And now we come into the kind of, not, not money slide, but the uh, rates that you can earn. So if we're talking about CSP, you should have some margin, and that I put X because uh, even though you're receiving some margin from um, providers or directly from Microsoft, sometimes we know that you need to give up portion of that uh, discount to customers because it, it might be tough uh, negotiation, so you're kind of giving away part of the discount. However, on top of that, you can earn 4% through the CSP program, so it's either Microsoft Commerce Incentive or CSP Indirect Reseller program, or if it's reserved instances, that will be 10%. And that, that part is actually not impacted by advanced specialization. However, if we go into this part, which is enterprise self-service uh, motion, enterprise or self-service, you associated yourself via PAL owner or contributor or via Lighthouse, and you can earn percentage. And if you have advanced specialization, you will earn 4% if you are the single partner, have association. And association can be at subscription level or at resource level versus comparable to if you don't have advanced specialization, you earn only 1%. So it's four times higher, which is great. If there are multiple partners associated, for big especially customers, uh, quite often there are multiple uh, managed service partners associated, then again, instead of half percent, you will earn one percent, which is twice uh, the rate, which is by itself is good. Actually, uh, the simplest way to forecast how much money potentially you can earn, you can look into your previous ACR that you generated with uh, customers that you have PAL association, use your current rate if you don't have advanced specialization and kind of multiply it by either two if they're multiple or four if you're single. That's potential uplift through just normal standard incentives. That's we're not even talking about any extra exotic programs. However, there are a few other items uh, on top of that. So one which I'll have a quick slide on. Uh, we just launched new program Azure workload acquisition and nurture campaign. Idea of this campaign, we paying for you to bring in new customers into Azure, kind of expanding ACR consumption uh, with new customers. Plus there is whole program. Uh, which called Azure Migration and uh, Modernization Program. If you search for azure.com uh, slash AMMP, that's whole big program with a lot, a lot of uh, different funds available. There are some kind of prerequisites for the partners to participate, but at least go there and take a look. That program might pay you for running pilots. That program might pay you for running workshops for a specific customer. So actually you nominate customer and then Microsoft will work to you with you to understand how much funds we can support you with to, to run uh, your programs for that specific customer. So really quick, going about this special uh, program. The name of the program is Azure Acquisition and Nurture. Idea that you not only acquire customer, and by acquisition we mean that you bring in the customer above specific ACR threshold, but then actually for nine months, we want you to continue to work with the customer and kind of nurture to continue grow the ACR. And we will pay for that. There are three workloads, migration, app innovation, and analytics. Only partners who has advanced specialization or Azure expert can participate. And customers, they must be either SMC or enterprise, basically managed customers, and the current consumption in either of those workloads should be less than 3000 ACR in the previous three months on average. If those things happening, 
you 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 participate in the program and the customers participating and the campaign goal what you need to do you need to work with customers and bring them across this 3000 threshold once you do this you will earn 9000 usd dollars as acquisition bonus and then for 9 months we will pay you either 30 or 10% depending on if you're a single pal partner or if you sell a csp or if it's multiple pal then it's going to be lower rate 10% on anything above 3000 ACR. So for example, in month one after the acquisition, they generated 4000 ACR, you will earn 30% from above 3000 from 1000 ACR. And it's kept at 75,000 USD per one workload. If you can bring the customer all three workloads, it, it might be up to 125, which is quite substantial USD. We've done modeling on average normal partner with normal customer will probably generate around 20,000 USD for one new workload acquired. So it's again quite substantial. In order to unlock this program, you need to have advanced specialization. Coming back to that, my first slide, please come to this uh, page, take a look, read about this and please consider maybe not now if it's a little bit too early for you, but maybe in, in, in a year or in a couple of years, you might work towards acquiring this. That's probably it. More than happy to stay and answer any questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Misha. So yes, if you have any, oh, so yeah, I see here a question from John O'Green. Does Azure Security land in any of those workloads? Yep, that's correct. So uh, I will share the link with the, this program kind of overview. It's 10 minute video overview with the much more details, but yes, uh, security sits in migration workload. Yes, all ACR is actually split into three buckets. Any other questions, team? And if not, just, yeah, um, throw them in the chat. Misha has access to the chat. He can uh, respond back or, yeah. Um, but thank you so much for that overview, Misha. Really appreciate your time today. I'll just hand it over to Paul Balquette, and I think there is another colleague who will be joining Paul after that, Sathya, um, to talk about Microsoft Ignite announcements. Hey, yeah, thanks. Um, thanks, Isaac. Yeah, and hi, everyone. Good to see lots of people on the call again. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to cover just a couple of major things that were announced at Ignite around modern workplace. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. Um, hopefully, I think probably most people will probably covered uh, or across uh, some of these these um, these major announcements um, for the kind of SMB and modern work area. But uh, if you haven't, just uh, I've got a bit of detail here. Um, the biggest one. For me, at least anyway, for and I think for our New Zealand market is the is the new uh, defender for business. And so um, uh, let me start here. So uh, we have already had for many years defender advanced threat protection um, for endpoint protection and extended um, detection and response. Um, and it's really been, I guess, more of an enterprise uh, tooling. And so what we've done, like with business premium, we've kind of skinned down defender to um, be uh, more suited to a uh, small, medium business market. Um, and uh, as you can see on the slide here, more easy to use and cost effective. Um, uh, just getting into, I'll talk about how it's licensed and things like that um, shortly. By the way, this deck you can download, I'll show you where you can get this um, as well. Um, so we cover kind of all the core um, areas that you'd expect um, from the, the threat management detection um, the, the, and the endpoint detection and response. Um, and then, of course, that's all built into the M365 uh, dashboard so that you can uh, look at a, at a, at a um, your endpoints and look at your customer environment um, and devices and get a single snapshot of, of where that sits. Now, I have been asked quite a bit about um, how this is going to fit in with um, partners that use MSP tooling and RMM and, and, and remote management um, and, and automation tooling. Um, of course, Microsoft is building um, our Lighthouse product uh, which is in preview at the moment um, and this will link into that um, product uh, when we launch it uh, which is coming i think next year early next year um, but in terms of the integration with other rmm tools i'm not sure where that's at at the moment um, hopefully they'll expand their, their capability to, to do that as well um, but just wanted to kind of go over the licensing side a little bit um, the product will be available at three dollars us um, per user per month um, we're just in um, uh, uh, sort of preview or early early release at the moment, so we don't have New Zealand pricing yet uh, for this. But 
Uh, it will also be included in the business premium uh, SKU. So as you can see, we're continuing to round out the, the business premium product and sort of just bolstering and adding more um, security capability into that, um, that tooling. I'm hoping everyone on the call knows um, about our business premium suite, um, but it is our primary mechanism uh, for most SMB small medium business customers. Um, typically less than 300 seats, but sometimes you have a customer that's smaller than that though that would be better off going to our E3, E5, depends on the, the product feature set. And I'll, I'll, um, I'll sort of touch on that actually just in a moment. Um, but what I wanted to just call out is just, um, we have a large opportunity in New Zealand, um, guys, and that, you know, we have some, you know, 70,000, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Office 365 customers um, today that um, many of you may be selling or they may have deployed um, other um, tooling um, from various uh, vendors, um, ESET and, and, and um, Sophos and Semantic and Trend, et cetera. Um, but we welcome you guys to have a look and we'd encourage you guys to have a look at, at the new Defender for Business um, and how that really integrates with the business premium story. Our end-to-end -end story is what it's really all about, um, that one single dashboard and tool set um, that can manage kind of the whole identity um, through productivity, through device management, through to security, um, which we all know is super important. So there's a large acquisition um, you know, opportunity um, where we've got lots of customers in New Zealand that, or not lots of companies in New Zealand that's still not using um, Office 365 or Microsoft 365. Um, and then there's a large upsell opportunity. And so all of those existing customers, and there are tens and tens of thousands of them uh, that run things like Business Standard and and Exchange and Business Basic that we can that we can upsell into uh, these SKUs. Um, there's a there's a summary um, just in terms of the partner opportunity here around um, you know what how it benefits you as a partner um, and uh, just in terms of the revenue and opportunity uh, side of it. So one thing that when I look at a lot of our sales data and I look at um, you know, customers that that our partners have, I often see um, reasonably large organizations, yeah, 50, 100, 150, 200 people still running Exchange for a lot of their users and, or still running Business Basic. And yeah, there's a substantial opportunity. I mean, it's not even about, really for us, it's not necessarily about um, increased revenue on the license, but for you guys, there's a large services opportunity um, that you can get by deploying these advanced um, services. Uh, so I really hope that you do um, spend some time to look into um, Winners Defender for business. Um, and I will just jump in and quickly show you, um, and I'll put this in the chat as well. But as always, I keep like to re recommend and referring this. I think uh, we always have to, you have to tell people lots of times uh, where to go and with Microsoft stuff and our portals. So um, I have this bookmarked, as you can see. And so I hope that all of you have uh, this, this bookmarked, I'll drop it in the chat, but this is the business premium site, which talks about all the benefits of it, the partner opportunity and all the guides you'll see down here. We've got the partner opportunity deck and the security and remote work um, toolkit, objection handling, et cetera. Um, and then if you go um, into um, products, uh, you'll see we've also got the link to the Lighthouse service that I mentioned before. Um, and then... Um, I click on to news here, you'll see, um, I'll just click to the Defender. Um, so you can see uh, we're coming soon to preview. And in here, um, we, we've got a couple of webinars. Um, you can join the, the webinar, um, was run last week, but you can go and sign up for it and uh, watch that on demand. Um, and there is a whole lot of content available um, uh, from the site as well. Uh, the other thing I just want to call out around Ignite announcements is, and I'm not going to go through this huge deck, there's a nice new fancy Teams deck, which is also available on the Teams site on the partner portal there. Um, but just some great momentum with Teams. Um, apologies, I won't go into, into full screen mode because I've just got a couple of slides out of this to show you. But uh, you can see here we've we've uh, tipped over that 250 million active users. Um, so huge growth, of course, um, COVID's um, uh, you, you know, mostly to thank for that, I suppose you could say. Um, in many cases, but obviously the product has been really rounded out. Um, we're, we're showing up very well in all of the um, analyst reports you can see here. Um, this is the Magic Quadrant for Unified Comms. Um, so super, super great to, to, to be, you know, up in the leader quadrant um, and really accelerated um, substantially over the last year, um, two years. And then a couple of big um, announcements from Ignite um, just around uh, virtual reality, augmented reality. So we announced Mesh last year. Um, we've now announced that Mesh will be coming to Teams. Um, so exactly as you see on the screen here, you'll be able to have your virtual avatar um, and join 
um, kind of a 3D mini experience. Pretty cool stuff. Um, we've enhanced some of the PowerPoint um, capability. Uh, we're running this already, so you can kind of position your video from your Teams session um, where you want in the PowerPoint, which is pretty nice. That's different from the the kind of positioning your video in front of the the screen, which I could do for you right now. I went for the time uh, we've got, but um, and then we've also got um, Speaker Coach built in now, which is using AI, so you can go through kind of rehearsals and um, get guidance as you go. Um, and then some automatic lighting stuff coming. I know Zoom said this for a little while, so we're going to bring that out uh, in 2022. Um, and then, yeah, you'll just see um, we've some of these things have just been enhanced. We've had to get the mode for quite some time. The presenter mode is is um, what I was referring to before. You can see we've got like a news reader uh, type mode. Um, and then um, there's a couple other things I just wanted to touch on. Um, if you're doing events, um, we've really rounded out the. Uh, webinar process, the registration process, um, and broadcast control, um, including having um, uh, green rooms for pre-production um, and event prep and things like that, which is pretty cool. Um, and there's a whole lot of integration points now with um, uh, different, um, the C CVent is one of them, the event management um, tools. Uh, and then um, a couple of other things, uh, if I jump forward, uh, Apologies again, just to kind of jump around a little bit, but I just wanted to show you this um, in, um, sorry, uh, here we go, Dynamics. So we've now enhanced the Dynamics integration. For the Dynamics partners on the call, you're probably well across this, but I just wanted to, for the folk that don't really get exposed to Dynamics much, we've really built out the integration between the Modern Work Productivity Suites and the Dynamics um, business apps areas. Um, and that includes, of course, previous announcements around Power Apps running in the portal uh, and in the, in the Teams um, platform. Um, but we've also built and announced actually at um, Ignite uh, a new call center offering. And so that's something that I get asked a lot, probably every couple of weeks I get asked about um, what's the call center solution for Teams. And so uh, we've basically announced our own first party call center service, which is based on the Dynamics 365 customer service module um, and Teams. Um, and so um, that's not specifically on the screen right now, um, but I just wanted to call that out um, so that so that you guys um, are aware of that. And the last thing I'll just quickly touch on, this is just a bit of a teaser, is um, on um, on uh, the, our, our blog site and for Ignite and on this dedicated site now, we've now got some nice running demos of something called Microsoft Loop. Uh, so the Microsoft Loop is this new canvas. I've just kind of got it um, sort of on this animated GIF at the moment just to show you. It's kind of a new um, uh, uh, collaboration uh, canvas, if you like, for collaborating on documents, on objects that we first announced actually using um, the term fluid framework. Uh, and we have that actually deployed internally at Microsoft today. You can drop a, an object into a Teams chat like a meeting agenda and people can operate it and work on it in real time and it works like Word or Excel does in real time in the browser. Um, but this is actually also the standalone app for it. So we're kind of building out the full app ecosystem around that as well. Anyway, I'll leave that there, just a bit of a teaser. I'll drop these in the chat and um, hand over to Sartha. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Vivi. Thank you, Paul. Just sharing my screen here. I think uh, Paul did a really good intro into some of the topics that I wanted to speak about, so that gives a good context. Uh, so I have a bunch of topics that I have chosen from the Ignite announcements. The first one we'll start with uh, Viva Connections. Uh, for those who don't know what Viva Connections is or not too familiar with it, it's basically a gateway for employee experience. It, it offers like a personalized, integrated uh, both desktop app and a mobile app that brings together news, conversations, uh, key resources, actionable tasks, items into a single employee home. Kind of like one single employee home where an employee can uh, uh, understand what's happening across the organization, take some immediate actions across. Uh, and it, the best part is it also comes with, the, with its own company branding and it can integrate with a lot of uh, critical business applications for, for each org as well. Uh, to, to show you how an experience would look like, this is this uh, what you have are some of the screenshots of uh, a mobile app of Viva Connections. As you can see, uh, we have a bunch of options which are more tuned towards the employee engagement part, and there are some which are tuned towards. I think I hear an echo from somebody. Okay, okay, uh, now I'm good. 
there are a bunch of cards that you see over here, which are more from an employee engagement side. There are a bunch that you have that that encourages the productivity side. So Viva connections, you can think of Viva connections as a bridge between employee productivity and engagement. And in this example that we have here, we have the branding for the company as a really cloud. Uh, Viva connections, mobile experience, the new web parts that you see over here. These are all web parts, by the way. There's a SharePoint page that with the web parts over it and an updated desktop version open for public preview uh, several weeks ago and it's now ready for worldwide availability, general availability. This follows the release of Viva Connections desktop that launched earlier this year. Uh, in terms of what you can bring onto this part, right? Like all these cards that you see over here that, that's accessible right from within Teams in one click. This could be anything from a simple hyperlink. Uh, clicking on this can open a simple web page to an adaptive card. Adaptive cards are the cards that you send within Teams, uh, within Outlook. So you can have an adaptive card also over here. You can have an actual app, a Teams app. Things like praise, uh, things like you know uh, tasks for teams, all of those can be brought over here as a, in a single click. So in addition to having a central place for employees to see announcements from their organization, things that are happening across the entire organization, employees would now be able to access their frequent horizontal things, horizontal solutions that they access on a daily basis. Right? I come, uh, I come in the morning. I immediately open my Viva Connections uh, dashboard and I see the tasks that are assigned to me. I check in using the Shifts app directly from here, check the holidays that are there, any approvals that I, ne that I need to make, that any approvals that I need to request or to approve. All of this would be uh, now available in one single consolidated experience for an employee. That's the beauty of it. And the other part that's, that's unique to this is it's a personalized experience as well. For each employee, the Viva Connections would, would use their login to personalize their own information over here. So it's a very personalized, customized experience that you can provide to all employees. This is an example of how Viva Connections first party app, basically the app and GA mobile looks like. As you can see, th in this case, we have a daily health check that is added over here and clicking on it opens its own like kind of like a pop up and uh, think of this as a back to office scenario when people come up they need to have a health checkup daily that needs to be done before they head into the uh, head into the office and that's something that you have uh, over here implemented in a very simple and quick map the interesting part that you can see over here in addition to the daily health checkup which is a customized thing that this particular organization really cloud has you also have some other apps over here uh, workday service now stocks perks plus all of these are apps and workday and service now as you all know are third party apps that are basically potential integrations that have that have brought into viva connections starting today you can engage with integrations from many industry leading partners to extend your culture and communications experience using viva connections this includes workday service now qualtrics ukg and more in addition to these partner integrations, you are now able to add cards for approvals, shifts, tasks from teams into your dashboard directly. These integrations will allow you to engage in Viva Connections with a new partner functionality as well, such as Adobe Sign and DocuSign for approvals. Too. So that's the really exciting part where you can have the critical business applications also surfaced over here for easy employee access. The next part that I would want to talk about uh, from the Ignite announcements is the ease of the, how we improve the team's chat and collaboration part, especially with folks who are outside the tenant, outside the uh, the, uh, the AAD tenant that you are currently operating in. So as you all know, we have uh, standard channels and private channels already. We have standard channels as channels that are open for everyone who's part of a team to you know, come together and then collaborate around. Private channels are basically uh, uh, private to only the members within the team. So even though you have like 100 members on a team, you can choose like 10 members out of those 100 and then have them as part of a private channel. And only those people will have access to what's happening within the channel. <coughs> Shared channel is a new concept that has been released right now. What it does is uh, you would be able to interact with folks outside your businesses, outside your tenants. <clears throat> and the reason why this is powerful is we uh, we did a, a quick analysis and we found that on an average, business decision makers are working with 11 external partners in a week. Uh, businesses are 
very vibrant and dynamic environment. So you might be uh, working with customers, partners, and vendors, not all of them in your own AD organization, right? So there is a need for collaborating with people who are outside the organization. And so far with standard channels and private channels, uh, the collaboration happened, yes, but, but it, there was some friction areas there. Uh, when you in, when you invite someone to collaborate with you over a standard channel or private channel, it, we usually add them as guests. There used to be a tenant switching involved. The guest would have to switch their tenants from there, from whichever tenant they are in, and then they come back, come to the uh, host tenant, and that's when they would be able to access the channels. With shared channels, they wouldn't have to do that at all. In addition to that, you also avoid oversharing. So shared channels also inherit the property of private channels in the sense that people who are added to a shared channel, imagine I am adding one of you to my shared channel, uh, you wouldn't be able to see everything that's happening in the team. You would be able to access content only in the shared channel. So this, uh, this provides the uh, privacy uh, co confidentiality part of it also to sharing. It addresses team's proliferation. How? Now, at least for me so far, I used to create new teams just so that I can add partners and customers into my teams. Uh, the reason behind this is if I add someone to an existing team uh, using a shared channel or uh, using, a sh uh, using a standard channel, then they would have access to other items in the team, right? So in to avoid that, I used to create entirely new teams. Now with shared channels, that becomes completely obsolete. I don't need to create a new team. I can just create a shared channel where people can come together and collaborate and have access to information just within the channel and not outside the team. It also does an automatic member management. So what I mean by that is when you create a shared channel and share it with a particular team, uh, what that means is a, a particular team will have an entire team will have access to the channel. Uh, now, whenever a member gets added to the team or removed from the team, they get automatically added to the channel and removed from the channel as well. So there is no manual member management. Uh, the membership to a particular team will determine the membership to this shared channel as well, making it very easy for organizers, team owners to track access for the shared channels. It is, of course, very easy to scale because you don't have to do a lot of team, pro team proliferation. The shared channels are very easy to scale as well. As you can see in a very small quick snapshot, it, with the shared channel, you are able to create one and then share it with a team owner in order for them to add it to a team. And shared channels are very easy to identify as well. When you get uh, people who are part of the shared channel from an external organization, they would also have an external tag associated with them. So people can clearly know who are from the host organization and who are from the external organization. As you can see, this external tag is very clear for the identification. With shared channels, it's going to be very easy to collaborate, not just within, but across organizations too. I'm just showing this very quickly to bring about the point that shared channels have a lot of uh, uh, bandwidth to support a number of members, number of channels as well. As you can see, you have 23,000 members and you can have 200 shared channels per team. So it definitely meets uh, uh, meets a wide variety of your, uh, wide variety of your business needs, and it could it could be used across and it could be used across B2B organizations. Uh, I will be sharing a link which has all this information so that you can go through this in your in your speed time. In addition to chat channels, we also have a simple chat feature that would allow you to have a chat with people outside your organization as well. Uh, it's uh, I picked this particular example because this doesn't just show sh uh, chatting with an, a person external to your organization. It actually shows chatting with a person who uses Teams personal account, not Teams for work, but Teams personal account. So here. Kayo is basically a person who is on Teams for uh, uh, this. Uh, Daniel is basically a person who is on Teams for work, whereas Kayo is a person who is using Teams personal account. Uh, and they are able to chat with each other seamlessly by just mentioning their phone number and finding this person outside their organization. This is very useful in scenarios where, example, think of a typical HR recruitment scenario, right? You are uh, you want to talk to a candidate who wants to join the organization. So just before they get onto the tenant, you want to get in touch with the candidate. This would be a very good uh, example for that. I want to touch upon the Dynamics 3 story plus Teams integration that uh, Paul walked through. Uh, a very good example of how D3 Stray is integrated directly within Teams. Uh, as you can see, uh, information from D3 Stray can be searched using Microsoft Search with a simple at mention of the account name. 
and that brings in a card, by the way, which is a loop component over here. And you can share this within a chat or channel within Teams. Now, this card that gets shared is also completely customizable and editable. So Dynamics 365 customer account information can be readily edited over here, as you can see from address to in progress, and people can start uh, you know, going ahead with their day without having to go through, a, uh, without having to open Dynamics 365 separately outside Teams. So this improves the collaboration and, and, and uh, it saves the product, it, like saves time and improves productivity as well because people can uh, directly work on items outside teams as well within teams and that, that reduces content switch and also keeps them in the flow of work. Satya, is it all right if we're able just to wrap up and for like one more item that you're able to share and the rest of our partners can go through the deck in their own time so we can end off with Matt Boswick? Absolutely, absolutely. Sir. So uh, the last two ones, I would probably like uh, allow, just share the just share the links. These are new apps that have been introduced within Teams, which has meeting capability, Atlassian Jira, and SAP Sales and Service Core. Definitely want uh, partners to take a look at it. These are powerful apps that enable employees to do more on Teams and drive within meetings context. So definitely mm -hmm. take a look at these exciting scenarios and do drop in your comments and let us know how what you feel about it. Happy to hear your feedback, thoughts about this, and definitely thank you. Thank you so much for your time, mate. Really appreciate it. Now it's early morning for you. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Matt, for joining us. I'd just like you to wrap up and. Yeah, kind of a, a few closing comments for the year. Uh, well, kia ora koutou team. Um, Satya, thank you very much for your uh, input there. That was awesome hearing about what's happening with Teams and I and, uh, really appreciate you joining. Um, look, just a big uh, warm hello and a shout out to all the um, Microsoft partners on the call. Thank you for taking time to to spend with us. Um, just want to share a couple of quick thoughts as we, as we wrap up. Uh, you know, it's tough for those of us that are in Auckland. Uh, we talk a lot about how uh, how difficult the um, COVID settings have been here for us, particularly those that maybe um, uh, have kids, uh, you know, learning from home, people working from home and all that kind of stuff. Um, I was on a call the other day and someone started to complain about, you know, the difficulties of lockdown and, you know, and all of that stuff. and. Actually, one of the other people on the call had this beautiful Pahutakawa flower as their team's background. And someone mentioned, you know, gosh, uh, all of a sudden I feel quite Christmassy looking at that Pahutakawa flower. And I thought, you know what, focus on the good stuff, people, because Christmas is coming. Uh, a bit of a break for, for, uh, for a few of us, hopefully. A uh, bit of uh, summer sunshine. And with any luck, you know, we are making our way through this uh, slightly uncertain and, and difficult period. Um, I've also been struck by the role of technology and, and all of us who are, uh, you know, in this tech uh, game, the, the role that technology is playing um, as we kind of figure our way out through, through this, both in terms of the way that we work together, collaboration tools, uh, the role of technology companies and, and you as Microsoft partners and helping solve challenges for your customers. But also, you know, things like um, the whole vaccination certification uh, process and how how that's coming together, you know, rapidly uh, with lots of different components. Um, I had a look at the uh, the NZ Pass Verifier yesterday, downloaded that and had a look. You know, how do you make something simple enough that that anyone in a cafe or a restaurant or a bar can use it? And and that then becomes the the way in the future that you know we're going to manage the next phase of this and it's just incredible to see um, some of the things that are happening uh, and the way that tech is is kind of giving us a chance to lead out of the the uncertainty and the difficulties um, but also offering a, a bit of hope and I'm, I'd also like to mention the partner awards the Microsoft partner awards and and do a massive shout out and a thank you to everyone who's uh, put time and effort and energy into um, submitting their entries. This year has been incredible. You know, the judging panel, which is uh, people from right across the Microsoft business, have have been involved in looking at that. And just some great examples of projects from partners uh, that are really having an impact. We'll be announcing uh, with a digital announcement the, the, um, the winners on the 6th of December. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, and I think 
Um, for me, one of the things that really ties nicely back into the conversation that we had earlier around 10K Wahine is this year for the first year, we've asked or we asked partners that were submitting for, into those awards just to share their thoughts on how building a diverse and, and inclusive uh, organization and organizational practices are helping them to improve the impact uh, that they're having with their customers. And so uh, it has been wonderful to read a lot of the, the feedback uh, and the input in those uh, award entries and the role that diversity and inclusion is, is playing in helping you all do great work. Um, and as we think about how do we continue to evolve and grow that and support each other uh, on that diversity and inclusion journey, I just do really want to say the 10K Wahine initiative that the team talked about earlier is, is the simplest and easiest way that we can work together um, to have a real impact, um, to bring a whole swathe of new people into the tech industry, um, to change some of those stats that you know aren't the best. 27% of employees in tech in New Zealand are women. Um, you know, that's one way we can all work together to have a real positive impact, uh, not just to solve the, the talent shortage cha challenges that we all face, but also to, to make tech better and to make our organisations better. So, so thank you. Uh, it's been a challenging year. I'm looking forward to a break. I'm looking forward to next year and doing wonderful things together. And, and Isaac, I want to thank you for hosting these webinars for the last few months. You've been awesome. Uh, Isaac's moving into a new role at Microsoft, so we're going to miss you, uh, but really excited to see how you go. Um, so with that, Kakite, take care. Talk to you soon. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, everyone who presented today and to all our partners who tuned in. Hazel, um, I'll reach out to you about that question. Cheers. And if anyone has any more questions, just put them in the chat and I can monitor it as they come in. Awesome.